There are some arguments online about whether you can use ERVs to exhaust from bathrooms, meaning the ERV takes the place of a bath fan. I would like to make sure that we all get to hear it from the actual heads of these companies. My name is Nick Agopian, and I'm the vice president of Renewair. I am absolutely in favor of exhausting bathroom exhaust through an ERV. Hi, my name is Travis Rash. I'm from Bro Newton. I'm our group product manager for our fresh air systems. And we do uh, approve the use of uh, fresh air systems to be utilized as an exhaust solution inside a bathroom, but let's use some common sense when doing so. Hi, I'm Bruno Quattro, the North American product manager for IAQ products with Fantech. ERVs can definitely work as a bathroom exhaust uh, as long as it's sized properly. Well, hello, my name is Sabi Fekete with Zender America. And yes, we are definitely exhausting the air from the bathrooms in uh, very tight homes. And with our system, you do not need bathroom fans. Hi, I'm Ken Nelson, and I'm the group sales manager at Panasonic. Just to be clear, I am absolutely good with putting an ERV in the bathroom and using it as a bathroom exhaust, as long as we never turn it off. What you have to understand is the system is constant running. There is no shutdown. Normally, mold grows when your airflow slows down extremely and you have high humidity and uh, certain temperatures for uh, a long period of time. Even when you're pulling out humid air from the bathroom, that humid air could create some condensation inside of the piping. But after a while, because you don't take shower 24 hours in the bathroom, the pipe dries out nicely and uh, doesn't cause any problem. One of the reasons we don't like to use uh, high moisture loads into the core, like from a bathroom where you get these quick blooms and stuff, is that the occupant will shut the damn thing off before the core has a chance to clear. As soon as the air quits moving, it's going to phase change and then fill the core full of water. And that's where you get your chia pet, right? That's, that's where it starts to grow. You get your mold issues and so forth. So it's when you, it's, it's, if you leave the ERV running all the time, I have no fear about being in a bathroom. If it shuts off, it defeats the whole purpose. Some of the variables that we need to be considering when we're sizing these types of systems, you know, what is the shower type? Is it a steam type shower? Is it a jetted tub? You know, how many heads in the shower do we have? How much steam are we going to generate from that shower? You know, what are the ceiling heights look like? What is the overall geometry of the room look like relative to one another? Where is the toilet? Where is that tub? Uh, these are the types of variables that we need to consider when we are sizing these types of systems. And again, managing those expectations as to how quickly we're going to be able to evacuate that bathroom area with this type of solution. When it comes to airflow design, uh, there's so many conflicting points of view. Uh, if you compare North American airflow designs in residential environments, we are amongst the lowest compared to other First Nations around the world. People calculate the airflow for a dwelling unit, single family, multifamily, doesn't matter, based on ASHRAE 62.2 values. International mechanical code, ASHRAE and the passive house codes are giving us the minimum standards, what we have to pull from the bathrooms. The regular mechanical code is normally 20 CFM from bathrooms or toilet rooms, 25 CFM from kitchens. These are all continuous ventilation. CFM rates, airflow rates, these are not intermittent. Intermittent rates are different. Those are only applying for bathroom fans or kitchen exhaust fans when the homeowners are using them for a short period of time. Our system is running continuously. So when you see our design and you're getting 20 CFM in the powder room and 24, 25 CFM in the bathroom, technically both of them require 20 CFM by the code. And whatever that number ends up being, then we talk about ventilation effectiveness, meaning how do we get the air exhausted from high contaminant areas, bathrooms and kitchens predominantly, and how do we supply the fresh air that's coming in in places where we can create a push-pull effect from, let's say, the master bedroom being supplied the fresh air and the master bathroom exhausting the contaminated air. So you're not allowing the contaminated air from the bathroom to end up inside the other living areas uh, within the space because bathrooms are they're not necessarily transient but you don't 
live in bathrooms. You you use the bathroom and then you you leave and you're either living in your bedroom or your living room and so on and so forth. So continuous airflow for sizing 20 CFM is standard, but when you go and activate your unit on high speed, it'll bump it up. What we call a high speed boost mode, you push a button in your bathroom or you can use a humidity sensor and the system automatically ramps up to high speed. That means that uh, if you're running on 120 CFM, the unit will probably ramp up to 170, 180 on the entire house, not just the bathroom, the entire house, because it's a centralized unit. So every extract will start to pulling more air and every supply will dumping more air in. It depends on when you operationalize the boost, meaning that, yeah, okay, if you're going to allow the contaminants to reach steady state within the built environment, uh, then of course it's a lot harder to pull down the entire house. If you know you're going to be cooking, if you know you're going to have arts and crafts with some smelly paint or glues or whatever the case may be, then if you put it on boost mode immediately, at even a lower airflow will be much more effective than allowing the entire space to be contaminated and then looking at higher airflows to, to create that reduction of the internally generated contaminants. So when it came to ERVs and cold climate in the past, it was not recommended because it was using a paper core. Uh, and what happens with a paper core, if it freezes or if, it's get, if it gets wet, and it, it will disintegrate over time. Where now the technology is advanced, where we use a polymer membrane core. So that polymer membrane can get wet. It is actually washable just by rinsing the core under water, no soak, because you don't want to take any of the proprietary properties that are on that membrane. There's an antimicrobial coating on those membranes so that it doesn't allow any mold or mildew that can grow on it. So it's definitely a, a better solution than what it was in the past. So now we're seeing more and more ERVs being offered in cold climates because there is a big advantage for it when it comes to comfort levels in your home. We only have an ERV at Panasonic, and Panasonic globally does not support HRVs. I have all my ERVs tested at Cold Climate Housing Research in Fairbanks. And, and the reason I be is because I initially was very concerned about that. Um, and they do a great job. They, they measure run times versus defrost times, temperatures. Um, I seldom have a problem with cold climate. And I say that because typically with, with air temperature, by the time it, so that the thermistor on an ERV is right inside that supply air nozzle. And by the time any air comes through there, you get a parasitic heat load going to the duct and it warms it up. So even if, even at if, that cold climate, you know, we were seeing minus 22 degrees outside. By the time it got to the ERV, it was 15 degrees, which the ERV is like, no problem. So the rub is with an ERV is if you put the ERV inside the envelope, you have the temperature of the mass of the ERV. That temperature of the mass will, will carry you a long way. If you put the ERV in the garage or externally in an attic or crawl space or something that effect, that's not you know part of the envelope. Now the mass can get cold and that's problematic. So as long as it's inside the envelope, we seldom have cold climate issues at all. And quite frankly, it's really important when you start getting below freezing temperatures outside that we hold moisture. You know, the ERV balances moisture from inside to out and outside to in. The media, the, the paper that goes between the two airstreams, it's like Gore-Tex, right? Except with Gore-Tex, Gore water vapor only goes one way. Your body warms up, heats, pressurizes that moisture water vapor, and it goes out through the pores. And in Gore-Tex, you have a bigger pore on the inside, small pore on the outside. It can only go one way. The ERV, the pores are the same size all the way through. So we're definitely selling ERVs to cold climate. There is no issue with that. The technicality behind our system is a little bit different than our competitors. We have an electric preheater installed in our units. These are staged preheaters. It's pure electricity. And they are running when they need to run. On ERVs, they only turn on below 25 Fahrenheit. On HRVs, they are turning on below 32 Fahrenheit for frost protection. It's a little bit increase your power consumption. However, we do not recirculate the air, which is 
dumped outside. We never pull back air. So when the air is leaving that room, that will never come back to the house. So this is the way how we can guarantee that any pollutants what we're moving out from your house, it's actually going out through the core and none of them is getting research back to the house. I'm going to tell you that you would get the ERV before the dehumidifier. So when we talk about putting dehumidification and, you know, we're, at some point in our world, we're, we have dehumidifiers like crazy in, in Japan. That's We do a ton of that. But all of our dehumidification strategies will go to the ERV first because I can diminish the high loads uh, before it gets to the dehumidifier. Remember, the dehumidifier is, is an extremely expensive thing to operate, right? I mean, it's basically air conditioning with no air conditioning. All you're doing is stripping water out. So if I can diminish the, the humidity load before the it gets to that dehumidifier and diminish how much time that that thing runs, I'm doing us all a favor, right? There you have it. So you can feel free to use the ERVs that you are specking into your new builds or into renovations of existing homes, as long as they are airtight enough to require an ERV, you can go ahead and use those ERVs to exhaust from bathrooms. So please do make sure that you're keeping your head on straight about the system of a home, because of course, everything is a system, everything is interrelating with each other. If you are not a subscriber already, please do subscribe now. Go ahead and comment below if you have anything else to add or questions to ask. Tune in next time.